<laughs> so I'd like to bring up Josephine. Um, I'm interested in uh, what kind of crowd we have here. You know, what, uh, what can I expect from 300 people? <coughs> you ready? Sure. Time. 
I see things. I see the little things affecting the big things. I let nature tell me what they're doing. But I have to wait. I have to linger. So this never was that big of a deal until I met a man that told me when the cows and the animals move in a big prairie, my prairie, there's a fog. Fog. Well, I thought, well, it's a fog from the dew. It's a fog from, you know, just the... And he said, no, there's a heat fog. There's dy bio biodynamic things going on when animals touch the ground and they shake loose the bugs. There's a, an excitement in nature that you can't see this fog until you stand and you notice it. And there is one. It's very subtle. And once you see it, you know that that's what happened way back in the day before we were really here with the buffalo and how that harmonious moves the buffalo, the poultry, the hawks, the deer, the wildlife, all found their unison, right? And then there was wolves to keep them moving. So that's what I'm trying to recreate. So my friend John, though, because he's new and hip and uh, got this YouTube channel and everything else, so he kind of co-opted it, which I think is good, because he added an optimize for happiness. And I think we could use that in our life. So this is this is a recipe, but it's something that cannot be co-opted. And I hope you can appreciate it today. So the cool thing about me being in Texas is this is where my grandmother Charlotte came from, from Temple, Texas. Um, so my grandfather, Bishop, was a dairy farmer, and they used to do pen pal writing. Um, when he went to visit Charlotte from central New York, he would stop at hostels. He would drive his 1920 car. Um, I actually don't know. He didn't fly. Um, so our family is, part of our family has been born from Texas. And we're now six generations. And what we're born out of is pasture. And what you don't know is my grandmother and my great-grandfather and my whole family of poultry. Um, we have 5,000 layers in Deansboro. And that's in the 20s and 30s because um, eggs were uh, uh, something you could sell into the city. Every farmer in central New York had dairy cows and poultry because they needed eggs. So that was a that was a staple. So then, what I found out from my dad, who's um, 84, I said, "Hey, what's the deal with the chickens?" He goes, "Well, you know." Um, once your mother does chickens, your father, your grandfather, you're going to do chickens. So my dad had told me before I left that he was the only 18-year-old in 1955 to have a brand new 1955 convertible Chevy right out of high school. He said it was all paid for by with chickens. <laughs> there was status back then. <laughs> and the land that he did it on was pasture. He had day ranges. I could not find all the pictures because my grandfather lost them in a flood. I wanted pictures of these day ranges of 5,000 chickens back in the 50s, 30s. They were doing pasture poultry before pasture poultry was cool. So we did the same thing um, up through my childhood. We didn't do 5,000, we did a couple hundred, you know, um, then we diversified, you know, life happens. We have, then we have a menagerie. We have chickens, goats, sheep, 
pigs, cows. Um, and so right now I'm here to learn from all of you on what the next generation, my granddaughters, now they right now have a, um, because it's winter, um, they, they live in town. But you know what? Because they're my granddaughters, because Pop Pop has some influence, they have a mobile chicken coop on their lawn and they move at 10 feet a day with six chickens and they're 100% layers. They're doing good. Good. And the neighbors are like, what the hell these children do? <laughs> and the thing is, is you never deny a child a sale. Yeah, you know, those eggs are great, but I'm going to buy them over here. Oh, are you crazy? So we have six generations of chicken farmers, pasture farmers. And I'm pretty proud of that. So I want to bring you to another level. So imagine it's 1920 and Charlotte moves to Deansboro, New York. And she stands on the vista that we now call Charlotte's Walk. Imagine, close your eyes and imagine what it was like in 1920. This is your land that you just moved to. Imagine your farm and your heritage, your ancestors, what 1920 looked like. So I have to say, I am fiercely to the point of I'll fight you, that I will protect my grandchildren's future with that grass. Because what you saw in 1920 is what you see in 2023. And what you see in the background is Mohawk Valley, where all the water is. It's my duty as a custodian of my children's land to keep that in pasture, to keep the soil health, to keep the water clean. And you know what? I don't care about the money. I don't care about the politicians. I have a story and the story is about resilience. The story is, I will never compromise, ever. I will never compromise, and no one can take that. That is our land. No debt. That is our land, and we protect it with pasture. Oh, sure, we can plow it out, we can do stuff. No. No. It's too important. The thing is, is we don't get paid for our ecosystem services. When it rains, it rains hard, and the town gets flooded, it's not from our land. Because we have streams in that valley that go through our farm, and I watch them. This stream never moved. This stream, I have three streams, never moved. Three inches, four inches, five inches of rain. This stream never moved. And the cul-de-sac that lives next to me comes into my land at a Y. You know where the water is? From the cul-de-sac, right? It looks funny. It's brown. Because it went over all the parking lots. Um, they, they took all the wetlands out to put the housing development. It mixes with our clean water. It's probably cleaner. <coughs> over there it floods. Over there it floods. But we don't get paid for that. And it doesn't matter. Because I'm producing food and I'm producing an ecosystem service nobody appreciates. Except for you. In your story. So I know I'm uh, probably preaching to the choir, but I want you to consider the power of why. So in the talking to everyone, everyone wants to know about certain things. And I have listened 
and I have been patient about everything that you've asked me, but I want to know your why. Because I don't care about the pens or the how the waterers are set up. What I want to know is why. Why are you doing things? <coughs> and my friend um, <coughs> from Pennsylvania came up with what I think is the best quote that I've ever heard. It says, plan with your grandchildren in mind, yours and mine. It's a driving force in my mind. And that spurred our mission. And I'm, I'm sitting here I'm looking at Dan Steele, like he's talking about goals and missions. All these themes are following. And this is what we, this is what we are telling the ancestors from 1920. This is what we're telling our future children. This is what we're telling our future community. This is what we will not compromise. This is our mission. So whatever you ask me, if it's if it's a uh, a kind of pen or a, a strategy or whatever, it all comes back to the core missions. Pretty good, right? Core mission. So I want you to discover what your why is. And I've written on my hand, because I thought it was important, Dan Steele, who my grandparents are Steeles, just like, what? <laughs> Dan stood up here and said, always better. Always better. Powerful. Probably one of the most powerful two words that I've heard. Always better. Let's talk about that. You probably haven't seen any of this. Flash floods. So um, you'll notice that that picture um, is my driveway. And you'll notice the, the water's not coming out of my driveway because it's at my neighbor's. Um, I literally drove, I literally had my kayak, just because I could. And I kayaked from the center of town back to the farm, just to prove a point. The water just kept going on by. There was no flooding on our property. Um, Ray Archuleta, the most powerful tool in regenerative ag, or the stuff that you want to tell your customer, is a heat gun. Because when you put it on a piece of bare ground, it's hot. When you put it in a pasture, it's cool. But why don't we have that as our tools? Um, I hope the farmer that I took this picture isn't here. <laughs> but on YouTube, YouTube Shorts, there's a there's there's a lot of pot pasture poultry, and that's what I saw. And it's not because I'm well that guy. Um, everyone can see it. Like that's okay. Well, in my context, it doesn't feel very good. It's hot, it's dry, there's no cover, there's no water infiltration, there's no biology. I, I think we could always better. But the problem is, I have the burden of silence. It's tough to be silent. And in my line of work as a farmer, I can't say anything about my peers. Those are people like you. I can't question. If I question, I have to do it in silence. The other thing that's bad about it is I write stories about you. I take pictures about your stories. I have to protect you from the outside world by saying nothing. If I see something I don't like, I just turn the camera. If I see if I see if I see poultry that doesn't fit what you're talking about, I turn the camera and we talk about your story. And I forget that I saw that. That's a heavy burden, I'm telling you, here. The other thing is I work for a conservation district. 
where I help farmers move always better. So I see stuff that nobody wants to see. Um, we have a running joke, we have these special glasses. When we get in the truck, we have to put them on. Because when you drive down the road, if there's stuff, we need blinders. We have these big ones that stick way out so you can't move your head enough to see. Always better. So what's cool about Daniel and Caitlin and Bruce and all the board members is they let me come here. They let me tell my story. And it was tremendously hard to figure out where I want to go. It took me three weeks. But in my research of what you folks do and what I believe, I came up with, well, stuff I didn't love. Organic, with no pasture. What's up with that? Um, I am so worked up that I want to pick up the phone and call whoever works there and say, dude, where's the pasture in our man? Pasture eggs. But you know, I was being nice. I'm going to try to let it go. Because it said in my mission statement, I need less stress in my life. <laughs> But all I have to do is turn the page, turn the social media, and all of a sudden, I have another paradigm. Huh, is that the recipe? Is that, is that what you're working towards? Is this feel right? So the burden of silence says, well, it's probably better than one thing, always better better, but not exactly the way you look at things. So the other burden of silence is I go on consultations to help these types of situations. Well, unfortunately, the people that invite me there from those companies that you all know, they don't know who I am. They've never LinkedIn me, they never uh, scour me through Facebook or whatever. So then they let me walk through this, <laughs> this scene and they ask me for my opinion, which is difficult for me to suppress. <laughs> because they don't know that way back in 1990, I ran a factory poultry house in in Union City, Ohio, where we had two million chickens. They do not know my history. If you buy me bourbon tonight, I will tell you the history. <laughs> but when I walk into a house, I know what it is. And when I see 6,000 chickens trying to fit through a four-foot door, one has to wonder, is this what we're talking about? Is it better? Yes, potentially. Is it what you all do? Not really. Who says, well, you should have said something. You should have wrote them up. You should have fined them for greenwashing. Or what's another word for greenwashing? Like lying. 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 <laughs> Non-moving chicken houses. Um, I, I know chickens. I could talk to a chicken and say, you know, when you open up the four foot gate, the four foot door, the first chicken goes out. You know, the, there was one chicken there that was just pushing that small guy up there, like, dude, I'm not going out there. Here, you go out. Chickens are like cows, are good where you feed. In the the urea smell around the barn is not healthy. And the, you can see where the gutters go, right? You can see where the rainwater. And so it's a, it's a facade. But I have the burden of silence.
It is really awkward. <laughs> so, someone asks you about your farm, you, or asks you about a neighbor. What's your name? Josh. So they say, uh, they, somebody comes up to you and say, so, uh, what do you think Josh is farm? And there's a pause. One, two, three, four, five. Well, that's not the pause you want. What do you think of Josh's farm? Five seconds. Well, well, what? Well, it usually means, well, um, you know, it's okay, but it could be better. It's this or it could be that. So when somebody asks me, I don't know, asks me about other farms, if they ask me about Greg Judy, is Greg Judy the real deal? 100%. There's no five second pause. There's no three second pause. What do you think about um, Bruce Hennessy's farm? 100%. If you've got a five second pause in somebody else's view, always better. Always better. You do not want the pause. You do not want somebody to question if that integrity deserves a pause. It's a time to learn. You will never hear it because nobody talks, you know, a lot of people talks about the back check out Josh, you know, like, well, I don't know. You know, Josh could do better, you know, he's, he's kind of doing okay, but, but, or well, but, or well, and then, then there's a pause, like, well, I kind of got to think about it. I need my measured answer. No, no, I, if you have integrity, if you have the things that you aspire to, there is no pause. If I get a pause, I want to know about it. If I got a pause, I know I got to get better. If I got a pause, I got to tell a better story. It's 100%. I don't want that pause. I want it to be instant. Yep. You got integrity? Yes. You got integrity? Yes. 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 No pause. So they make this thing, they call it Google. Google Earth. They are their other tools. But right now, Google Earth gives you pause. So you know, your customers, as well as mine, can fly in to your farm if you give us the address, and we can see how you're doing. I have flown into every farm on the panel, including the Salatons. They are not immune from my eye. <laughs> I need to see from space something that resembles movement. What can I deduct from no movement? Is it got integrity in what you're doing? No. I'm saying no. So this is Pat's pasture. Here's Pat. Hi, Pat. I'm glad you. I'm glad you. You're moving. Right? I can tell. I can tell fertility. I can tell. Right? There's a lot of people that I see no movement, and yet you know what? When I look at their social media pages, I look at their marketing, I look at their brand. What they've done is they've co-opted what you do. They move the camera this far. So don't think that we're not looking. Your customer can look. I can look. You know, you can look. Anybody can look. And my vision is you can't hide. You have to get better. Because we can see. And it's my goal, or not my goal, it's my wish that the government or whoever does the flying of the Googles, 
<laughs> do not make it live, like a weather station or a military, because then I can see your farm today, and I can wonder, do I see chickens? See, what's interesting about my story is I live in dairy country, organic dairy, and we are getting pummeled in New York by Texas dairies that say they're grazing these cows. But when I fly in from Google, I see no cows. I fly into the road, and I look at the land, and there isn't any grass. How is that organic? So they co-opted what we try to do. Always better. Always better. Don't think for a minute that you can rest on your loyals. Always better. Story. Do not think that you're above the integrity. And I believe this group isn't. But I want you to remember that even if you are a little bit, you could do better, do better, and concentrate on your brand because what's stressful on me is worrying about the other guy. And remember, my goal is no stress in my life. So I have to let it go, but I want you to remember this. <coughs> that I'm your conservation lawyer. I see you. And do not come up to me and think you can bullshit me. Do not. You could try. People have. And all I gotta do is pick you out of Google Earth, ask your address, and I can tell you right then and there. Do you wanna go there, Mike? Do you wanna go there? I don't think you do. Nope. And if you do, I'll just talk to your wife and you'll be out anyway. <laughs> See, we know the problem. The problem is us. So everything that I have shown you so far is a human problem. It's not an animal problem. It's not an infrastructure problem. It's a decision-making problem. It's a goal-setting problem. It's a human problem. Anything that we talk about, humans do it. Because a chicken has what, a brain? What's the size of a chicken's brain? Like a pencil lead, <laughs> maybe, right? They do my cows. I give them the opportunity to do whatever they do, and they do it. I move the fences. I got a big brain. I know when they don't know, like, hey, in 30 days I'm going to go over there. No, I do that. They just say, there's fresh grass. There's fresh grass. There's fresh grass. There's fresh grass. They just follow the fresh grass. They don't know that I planned it all out for the year. They don't know anything. We're the problem. Look in the mirror. Now this group is highly intelligent. We don't have this problem, but let's say that outside this room, always better. So what is getting better? So there's a thing going around, you know, it's not the cow, it's the how. You know, that's great. Doesn't really work for chickens though. So I'm imploring you, after bourbon or eggnog or whatever, we should come up with a, a tag for APA. I don't know what it is. Um, I heard today something about, uh, what is it, the yolk in the local? What was, where's Tristan? Local yolks for local folks or something. I'm sure you're a very entertaining offer. I'm sure you can come up with something better where I can, because I want a wagon. I want it on my swag. I want to proudly say, yeah, it's not the cow. It's not the chicken. It's not the pen. It's how. It's why. That's what you want. That's the story. It's not the pen. It's how you do it. You have the roadmap. It's in your bylaws. It's on your... It tells us where you want to be. It's easy. Do that. Always better. Follow your mission. The best part is everyone in here is a teacher. 
You can lean on each other. It's not like you have to go outside the family. You guys all have taught me more than I've ever wanted to know about poultry. <laughs> it's all here. Always better. <laughs> Follow the principles. So last year for Instagram, I interviewed some grass plants. What do you need? <laughs> what do you need? I need fertility. I need recovery. I need, once in a while, I need to propagate. I need a seed head so I can have my progeny. I need for you to take care of me. I need for you to manage the grass. I need for you to manage the grass so you'll have more grass. So in our in our neck of the woods, if my cows are eating 100% grass, they need more grass. I can't kill the grass. But it seems like in my neighborhood, we want to kill the grass. We want to get as much. We want to get as much from that soil and that grass is possible and you know what when, when it's when it's november we want it it's just like the top of this thing right here nothing we're so efficient we're not leaving nothing we don't waste anything we just take it all baby and then we buy in a bunch of stuff to build it back up and we say oh well, that's great i wonder why it's not growing to its full potential well, because you clipped off all its heads and you took all its roots. And you expect the grass to tell your story because you're not poultry farmers. You're grass farmers. Because the only thing pretty is the grass on those chicken's feet. That grass is your foundation. You said it. You said it. It's in your bylaws. You're moving the pasture and the chicken. They're one. They're connected. Oh my God. It's so easy. But no. We're human. We dominate the nature. We crush it down. We put poop on it. We stop it. And it's supposed to give us all we need. Yeah. I'm dominating nature. <laughs> it's pretty simple. Pretty simple. Abide by the grass growth. Abide by recovery times. Do intense monitoring. Do all of that. Look at the microbes. Do all of it. There's nothing new here. I think I was talking to John. Hey, what can we do with that's innovative? There isn't any. It's all in the YouTube videos. It's all in the Salatin's books. It's all in your books. It's all there. You just have to apply it in a way that respects your why. Always better. Always better. You know what better is. I don't have to stand up here and give you a recipe. So uh, how many pasture poke you should have put this picture? I don't need to know. I need to know your why are you doing what you're doing. And if I don't know the answer, I'm gonna go over here to Josh. He's gonna help you answer. So I watched Joel Salatin's speech from last year three times. It was pretty awesome, actually. Um, the funny part was when he's standing up here, he goes, yeah, um, anybody from 1963 here? 1963? I think there was like one person. And I was like in the background of YouTube going, yeah, yeah, I'm from 1963. Yeah, yeah, I am. I'm like, he's five and I was just born. It's not complicated. Animals move eating plants from perennial. That's what he said. Now you can say, you know what, Joel? I don't believe you. I think you're full of crap. It's, it's, it's too simple. Always better. Follow the principles. Always better. I have a phrase. We grow so much feed, we don't know what to do with it. That's our mantra. 
So what else is going on the farm besides what we're doing? Wildlife. When I manipulate the grass and I leave rest periods and I leave these practices and I do mob grazing, I do all these grazing styles, um, there's thousand dollar bucks laying in that tall grass. That's income, right? There's birds on my property, thousands of birds. I don't have to pay any money for like fly tapes and insecticides. Why would I? That's what they do. It's this ecosystem based on the whole. This is crazy. And so all my neighbors are like, well, I hope you're going to mow that for hay. I hope you're going to take all that. You know, you couldn't waste it. Oh my God, what is wrong with you? You're wasting. This is nuts. I'm like, no, I grow so much that I'm able to leave cows in paddocks that aren't managed for five days while they go on vacation. <laughs> So what's the best bite for chickens? I don't know. There's any people in here that are doing short grazing, tall grazing, middle grazing, they're grazing cover crops or whatever, I don't know. Um, from what I can gather, the APA membership um, uses about 10% to grow a chicken. The other is magic. The, the, the bugs or whatever's in the pasture. If you manage high, there might be more bugs. The chickens um, like it better. I don't know. I don't know your why. You should ask that. Well, geez, I don't know. I need the right kind of pasture. Oh, really? The right kind of pasture? The last time I checked on what the right kind of pasture, based on a prescription from a seed company, was $13 a pound for right. Oh, that's great. Because down here at the corner, that's a perennial pasture with so much nutrition in it that cost me zero. I just managed it. And you know, those chickens really like those broad leaves, and they have all those nutrients packed in there into their bodies for human consumption. So, is there a prescription? I don't know. I would, as soon as you ask me, I'll say, well, what's your why? And then you get frustrated and walk away. I get it. Joel said there's stress in grazing because there's these recipes. And so I put them all together. So at any day, at any time, I can do a prescribed rotation of grazing management, intensive, whole, sluggy based mob stock, amplified, regenerative, mind and linger grazing stock. <laughs> you, you could be doing all of it or none of it. You could do one prescription one day, three the other, and whatever. Whatever it is, don't hold yourself back. Do it all. Let's not stress about it. Let's work on getting better, always better. And always better means you're managing. You're managing to the level of your why. And this is something I take to heart because um, if we don't plan for fun, we don't have any. That's me, I'm a workaholic. We don't plan for fun, we won't have any. If we don't have any grass, we can't go on and have any fun. We have so much grass that we can have fun and we, you know when the cow, when you come back from vacation, and the cows are like, I don't know what you're doing here. They still got two days worth of feed. That's good. Because then you can spend another extra day at the fish are right good. You can spend another day on vacation. That's a plan. I need a plan. And I think you do too. Because Jason, I listened to his podcast, and he said he didn't deserve a vacation. How many farmers do you know that say that? Well, I know can't make a vacation. Is that always better? No. No. Can it be done? Yes. Those words hurt for a farmer that's been on the land 40 years. I didn't deserve it. That'd be great. That'd be great when he uh, when the calling hours and he has to do a eulogy. Yeah, he was a good worker. He never got a vacation, but he was a good good worker. Come on, we got to get the why lined 
end up with plan for what you want instead of take what you get. Come on, it's 2024. Always better. You know when you do better? This is our farm. When you do better, when you do all the things according to your why, we're in with a Thousand Farms initiative and they're doing stuff on our farm to prove to America, to prove to our consumers, <laughs> we are better. And here's what, we're sequestering more water on the land. We have better diversity. We have things. We have to hook up with these folks because our message is we are better. Always better. We're better. Because this is what we're doing. This is our story. This is not a joke. We are better. We need for somebody to do this in research so we can say to America, this is the way we do it. Always better. I work with some Hamilton College kids. They did some research on my farm. They posted it. This is a sixty, seventy thousand dollar a year college. These are four, four college students that came out, and they didn't. The only thing that they loved about the farm is how much water it sequestered. They were all environmental students. They did all the work. They took the soil. They put it in a beaker and put the water in. What's that called? The slight test. And watch that no, I watched when I went to their presentation with all the community members in this highfalutin town that I support with my taxes. And I watched that soil never left that beaker. Never. I sat there for 20, 30, 40 minutes. And people were like this. How does that happen? How does that happen? What's that? I don't understand. So then just fall away. Then you can start telling your story about the glues, the microbes, the impact, and everything else that goes on. That piece of beaker with that soil is our story. It's easy to tell. Just put it in the beaker. Let it happen. Nothing happens. Then tell your story. That's the story. We have the story. <coughs> we have the templates. We have the people. Um, that's Daniel. See, I am old. And I have the original pasture poultry pamphlet that I finally got signed by his dad. But that's Daniel. I was there in 1991. I remember this, their story. It's why we're here. This is the story that we need to tell. The problem is, we don't digest it. That's the problem. Oh, it's fine and dandy for us to eat it. You know, I've never digested grass really well. As much as I've eaten. As much as I've eaten. Um, people have tried. We put them in groups, try the grass, get it down. No, I'm not going to do it. So the beauty of what you all do is you have this advocate. This new, glowing advocate that I'm going to suggest um, is going to propel you into the next phase of what APA is about. The yoke. So when I go to a Toastmaster meeting and I want to make an impact about what you folks do, or what I do, I just take two eggs. One for my farm, or farms like mine, or farms like yours, and I take a yoke. And I, when I crack that, well I can't, Freaking shells like really hard to crack. Um, so it takes me like two, three times, and then I take a store bought egg and I crack it as hard as I would on the ground, that goes all over the freaking place. And 
when you open that door to the public and you show them the difference of the yoke, it tells the story of the grass. <coughs> See, the grass is not devoid of the yoke. The grass is connected to the yoke through its carotenes, through its biology. We don't we can't celebrate the grass itself without something to show for it. And a yoke is the easiest messenger. I was telling you in the media class, when I do these presentations of the yoke difference, I sell eggs. And I was telling also that if you're in a room of 20 people from the Chamber of Commerce, there's one guy back there that won't buy the eggs. I just wait. And I just look at him. And the mob takes over. Because if he don't buy my eggs, he has to buy my eggs because it's too much pressure. <laughs> but he doesn't know that because he doesn't know our strategy that we've learned for the last couple of days. The yoke is the ticket, in my opinion. And guess what? The yoke has problems. I have a guy that works, a friend, longtime friend, works at Hillendale. And I think I've said, I love a good backstory. And the backstory is this everybody wants an orange yoke like yours. So they sprinkle the miracles. I don't know, is there a miracle fairy that goes up and down the factory? line and sprinkles miracle dust. They're now bioengineering orange corn. You've heard of that. Dark orange corn. If you feed it to the chicken, you'll have more. So what they're doing is they're circumventing what you're doing. And so the, the decision you have to make is do you hold the burden of silence against your peers? It's a tough question. <laughs> or do you Take my advice, relieve yourself from stress, and focus on your story. Always better, your story. Who cares about that? When you focus on your story in front of your people, you help them make the connection from the yoke to the grass. You show them the movement. You show them the poultry. You show them the soil health. You show them the, when it rains two inches, there's no impact. You show them. It's your job to tell your story. And always get better. Thank you.